Howdy, this is Mr. Justice. Uh, I'm going to go over the gene expression and protein synthesis worksheet and how to do it. Uh, let's take a look at question number one. So this is a DNA sequence. I know that it is DNA because of thymine in it. And what we'll need to do is first transcribe this DNA into mRNA, and then we'll use that mRNA transcript, that code, to determine the amino acids. We also need to know that their tRNA anticodons uh, are a part of the equation too, but I'll talk about that in a minute because that part's not really the important part. The important part here is the mRNA and the resulting amino acid sequence. So the first one has already been done for you, right? Take a look at this first triplet of DNA nucleotides, TAC, will have a complement of AUG. So you have to kind of use your imagination here. M, uh, uh, RNA polymerase is what is transcribing this DNA to make the RNA here. So that's uh, it's an enzyme that is adding an A, a U, and a G as it encounters the TAC on the DNA, if that makes sense. Let's do the next triplet of nucleotides. CGT will complement G, C, A. So RNA polymerase will add G, C, A in this growing mRNA strand. Let's do the next one. G, T, C will complement C, A, G. And we'll continue to, to do that to uh, build out that mRNA transcript uh, for the entire DNA sequence that you see here. Uh, let's skip the tRNA for now, and what we'll do is head over to the amino acids. So how do we uh, translate this mRNA code into amino acid sequences? The first one has been done already. Uh, take a look. We're going to need to use this uh, universal genetic code wheel here. Uh, note that we'll start in the center and then work our way out. Notice also that this circle has been uh, kind of uh, split up into four quadrants. And so the first letter, A, will have us only work then within this one quadrant, in the A quadrant. Uh, so here's what we're trying to do. We're trying to figure out the amino acid that goes along with AUG, this codon. So we'll come up here. A is the first letter. U, this next concentric circle out, will be our second letter in the codon. So A U, watch where my mouse is going. And then the last letter is this third concentric circle on the outside, G. A U G lands us on the amino acid MET. We can come over here to this key to see what, what MET is. MET is just the name of the amino acid called methionine. Uh, and so that's why I've written out MET in this line here. Uh, let's do the next one. G C a. So let's see, our first letter is G, so we'll use this, G. Second letter is C. Third letter is A, G, C, A, and we land on alanine. And we can abbreviate alanine as A, L, A. Let's do the last one here, All right? C, A, G. There's a C, A, G. Glutamine, or GLN for short. And you'll continue on for the rest of those mRNA codons, right? Think about it. I stopped here at three codons. You'll have three more to go. Uh, that means then that our final amino acid will have more than the three that you see. Keep going until you encounter a stop codon. And the stop codon here, uh, well, there's three of them. There's UAA is one of the stop codons. U a G is one of the other stop codons, and the third stop codon is U G A. Uh, if a ribosome encounters any of those three stop codons, it tells the ribosome to stop transcribing uh, and stop translating, and we're done. We've got our amino acids, and so you'll end at that point. Now, uh, take a look. A lot of you guys have been having uh, some questions about question number two. Let's talk about this. So this DNA strand here, the, Question two is kind of designed to uh, get you to think, well, what could happen if a mutation occurs? Even just a simple 
base substitution mutation where one of the nucleotides in the DNA is changed from one letter to another. What impact does that have on the resulting mRNA and ultimately DNA, uh, rather amino acids? Uh, so let's take a look here. So uh, the only difference between this DNA sequence in question two and this DNA sequence in question one is that this G, guanine, has been changed to a C, cytosine. So take a look, you're going to go through, do the same process of the mRNA, and then when you get to this one, right, notice that your codon that you create for ATC will be different than the codon that's produced for ATG. What impact does that have on the mRNA, and what impact does that have on the resulting amino acid chain that you'll build out? The last thing I'll mention here is these tRNA questions. Like a lot of us have been using this tRNA uh, to figure out those amino acids and do not do that. I've uh, color coded our instructions here on purpose. Take a look here. These mRNA sequences I've intentionally made blue to get you to look at this blue sentence. It says, remember to use the mRNA codons to determine the sequence of amino acids and the resulting protein. So use these codons, AUG, GCA, CAG, to determine those amino acids. Do not use the tRNA, all right? With that said, we are responsible for understanding what role TR tRNA plays. And what tRNA does is it has, it, well, it, it's got an anti-codon. So if the mRNA is a codon, the tRNA triplet of nucleotides is called the anticodon, and, and it's just a complementary sequence as well. What the tRNA does is transfers the amino acid to the ribosome as we build out that larger sequence of amino acids. So do not use the sequence on the tRNA to determine the amino acids. Only use the sequence of the mRNA to do that. All right, so uh, take a look. The first one has been done. AUG has a complement of UAC. Makes sense. Uh, GCA, our next codon here in the mRNA, is going to have an anticodon of CGU, right? The next one, CAG, is going to be GUC. And continue making your tRNA transcripts and complementary pairs here uh, for questions one and two. All right, until you reach a stop codon, in which case you're done. All right, we've got some other questions here which I feel like are pretty straightforward. Uh, so let me know through email if you have any questions.